I am so excited to share my latest creation with you. I'm Leanne and this is my newly named channel. It's called Bird Nest Books and it was inspired actually by, by this book. I started out making this book um, with an idea that I wanted to give it to a friend. I have a party coming up here and we exchange mugs and I just wanted to put some a little, just a little simple junk journal in it and this is what I started out with. I, I had this fabric that I had picked up. It's a nice upholstery fabric so I started out with that and then I designed this darling little bird here. A bird amongst the roses for the cover and and it just kind of went from there. I like little birdies and I like flowers and this this little book just was an inspiration for me so I backed it with gauze right here and I have feathers sticking out just to kind of give the feel of a nice cozy little nest it is a nine by six by the way when you open it up I have some music here I put a little rosette with some just a natural looking string to come off of it I was trying to create as I was going through and making it, just the feel of a variety of things coming in, almost like a bird nest. You know, how you get a variety of different different little things tucked in here and there that you'll find, and in it became my inspiration. On this page here, I have a little baggie. I have some sparkle that I added to it. It's got two little tags that come out. I recently picked up this rosette. It was one of my awesome thrift store finds. Also on the side right here, I tucked in just a little feather to give it a nice soft touch. Scattered throughout the book, you'll see little words. I love words. These are the Tim Holtz ones. It says, do all the good you can. On the front here, I should point out I have two of them. Up here it says, fill my soul. It says, fill my soul. And over here it says, whisper to my heart. On the next page, I have a doily, and it says, She dreamed beautiful dreams. So I do have nine pages, which makes a total of front and back 18. So here I have a little tuck spot. I dyed a note card, and I love how it turned out. I, I added some coloring to it just to bring up some of the bluish-green tones that I have scattered throughout the book. So I have that there. I stapled on a little piece of lace. I have three tucks here. One that I printed off and this is just a simple little one that I also put some lace on the top. And then a simple book page one that I covered up with some paint to give it a more distressed look but also to create a little more spot where I can write on. This page I love. This sweet little girl. Isn't she lovely? Her beautiful eyes. Over here on the page it says, a look in her eyes. I thought that was quite appropriate for this. So I have a variety of little tucks in here. I have the little girl. I've got a piece of kind of bluish netting there with a button, a little bit of fabric sticking out. This is a vintage um, piece of satin ribbon. I've got a little tuck that I ripped apart on the bottom just to create a little bit more texture. This is a sweet little piece that I cut out, give it a little distressed look. And then I've got this envelope here with little polka dots on it with a tag that has some embossing on the bottom. So those are my tucks for this area. I just love the look that I created with, with all of it together. Just <clears throat> the ribbon, the colorings, and the textures. It just, just was so sweet. Over on the other side, this is some vintage satin that I had picked up and then right tucked in there I I placed some of this this graph paper here just tucked in along the inside just to bring a little bit of that color over to this side put in a few different little pieces of ephemera here's a belly band here which I have two things tucked inside a little postcard and this is just a simple little stain dye that I did sewing across. I didn't want this lampshade to look too Christmassy. That was my concern. I have a number 42 right there. I thought I'd just added a nice little look. And then I added some <clears throat> just leftover threadings that was from a, a material type thing. I thought I'd 
just kind of gave it a nice little grungy look on the bottom there. On the side, I cut these pages to create a scalloped edge. Put a little piece of a doily there, and it's got a little tuck. This page was just a simple page, but I just loved, I loved its simplicity. I got uh, a few different dye pieces, not dye pieces, but coffee, di coffee dyed pieces. This one here, it actually has a little rip on the top. Uh, see that? I liked that though. I, it just gave it this this look that I really enjoyed. This one's copy dyed, and I just put a little piece of feather on the top. And this copy dyed lined paper here, I thought it turned out fabulous. Did a little stamping on the side to create a little more texture, some washi tape. And this is an embossing folder. So on this page, here's a little tuck spot once again <clears throat> with these index cards that I think just turned out fabulous. Sweet little contrasting feminine looking lacy scalloped edge tuck tag. Once again, I placed some of that grungy looking stuff on the bottom. I really wanted a, a contrast between the grunge and the softness with the lace. <clears throat> on this page here, once again, I placed some of that vintage satin. I have these little envelopes, these cute little envelopes scattered throughout and then a simple tucks and then I actually um, placed that on with Mod Podge. On this page, <clears throat> once again I have another one of the index cards but this one I sewed on a piece of the lace. So I like using a combination between the fabric lace and the, and the paper lace that I cut out with dies or with punches either way because you can get the feel of the lace but you don't have the bulk of the lace so I like using a combination so I've, I've just placed a little bit of this and a little bit of that and once again that's where it came to me the idea that I feel like I'm making like a little birdie nest because I'm just tucking in a little bit of this a little bit of that there's a little piece of grungy stuff there a couple of sweet little fabric samples there a coffee dyed lace so on this page, I don't know if you can see it, I have two white feathers just positioned at the top there just to creating a nice um, soft little textured flow and a, and a vintage button right at the top. I have a few little, um, this is part of a larger lace thing, it was a, has like five, five of these flowers together to make one big flower. So these are little turn spots. Here's a little page that I grunged up with some paint and stamping on it. I like how it turned out. And this tag on the back, I put a little heart. So I'm happy with how that is. Turn the page again. I've got some pattern paper um, ruffle I created right there. Another one of those envelopes that I mentioned earlier. And some more of that satin, the vintage satin. Here's a little button card that I created a tuck pocket out of. Put a little bit of lace. Um, here's just a piece of one of the note papers that I have. This is a card that I have from years ago when I was teaching a ladies Bible study group. I had it and I thought it'd be perfect with the, this ribbon and just how it was already pre-flattened. I just loved it. So a bunch of uh, miscellaneous things that I kind of grabbed and stuck down there. A couple different words, a little more um, tattered parts there. I just love the feel that it creates. On this page we have a little lace pocket here. This is a little kitty that I made for this spot. I thought it was just sweet. And three different little tucks. This one in particular I put a little lace at the top and then with another button connected to it. Nice simple little places that you can write the different notes. And then this was a vintage calendar. So here's a little card. And this is a postcard that I had in my stash. And I just put, um, Mod Podge a little bit of the pattern pieces down there and put a piece of the feather on there. And once again, I'm using those note cards, the little index cards that I've coffee dyed. Put that there. This came in a little packet that I ordered. I went, I liked how it went on that corner. And once again, just adding those little feather pieces <clears throat> on my hearts. 
Oh, this is one of my favorite coffee dyeing pieces. I just love how that turns out. So I, I did a ledger paper on this side and I echoed it over on the other side of the page. Here's a little pocket I made. That This paper actually was grayer than this and I didn't like how it looked so I went over it with some various paints to create a more of a look that would go with, with the page. The gray was taking too much away from it. Here's a couple of uh, order sheets that have been coffee dyed. A little clip up here with some of the vintage paperwork. This I love! So I looked around and looked around and I was able to find some braille paper um, and then I cut out this little bird out of the braille paper. I, I tried doing some different things but it, I felt like the, the braille was just taking too much but I thought on something small like this it was just so um, so precious and there's something about the freedom of a bird flying and just the freedom that I feel like um, someone that can't see that when they learn braille and, and are able to read um, that, that, that they just go hand in hand together. I had a, a, an uncle that was deaf and so, <clears throat> and so stuff like that is just really dear to me. On this page over here I have Mod Podge a doily down and I have three different tucks. Once again a different envelope an alphabet and then um, I added a lace to uh, paper, just the, the paper lace. Once again, just to try to add that touch of lace but keeping it flat. And then I've got the grunge on the bottom. On this page, I use a piece of my leftover fabric that I used to cover it and made a pocket out of it. It's a, a trifold here. And I used the crepe paper rolls, the party, the party rolls to make um, a little rosette. So I like doing that. It's, it's inexpensive, it's easy, and it just adds a fun little touch. On this page I just carried over a little bit. And, and I liked keeping this plain because then you kind of get like a peek through. It just creates a little bit of interest as you're moving on to the next page. So here we are, um, this lovely gal here. I, I made her, well, I took the image and then I created into what I wanted it to be. And then I added um, another feather. I loved adding the feathers, a little piece of grunge. I've got some ribbon here, some just beautiful sweet ribbon. I've got another one of these polka dot pockets, another one of these floral tucks, and another coffee stained piece. I loved how that looked. Come on. So, and it's on a polka dot page. So I try to vary the types of coffee dyeing paper that I use, whether it's lined or the polka dot or the back here um, with the lace or here with the brocade type of look. This is a waterfall that I made and I, uh, I did stenciling on the top of it and then some edging with the Tim Holtz inks and cre created a nice a nice look. So once again those are the crepe paper rosettes. This flips up and I place some words. This is curiously and you flip this one up and I just put the number 70 there. I thought with the number 70 it makes you a little bit curious as to what it means. And then one more flip it says the power of thinking right there in a little word. You can see the polka dot sticking through from the coffee dyed paper. On this side I have a little flip. These were some little rosettes that I uh, that I fussy cutted from a piece of um, paper that I believe I got from Hobby Lobby. Uh, a little clip there, a few pieces of fabric. Once again I modipodged a little piece of doily there and then I have some just vintage inserts with another envelope that can be used. Fun page. One more page here. So what I have is a little envelope that I picked up someplace. I made a ruffle out of the crepe paper as well as a little rosette. This was an embossed piece of cardstock that it just added a nice little touch. And then a receipt page that I fussy cut and, and um, this was cut out from a Martha Stewart punch. 
the leaves were and then I fussy cut the rows. Made a pretty little addition there. So here's a tuck on one of my last pages. Just a nice piece of baking paper and then I tucked in a piece of the um, regular paper because I, I liked how it looked with the lines on it. So as I turn here, I had this already printed out from something previously that I had done, the Titanic, <clears throat> and I just thought how nice it was because the Titanic, um, it, it made me think about how you can look at it as something tragic, but I could think about people at that time that probably were longing and wanting to be on a cruise like that and how... Um, thankful they probably were that they weren't on that particular cruise and so it just made me think about how there's things that we might want in our life and think that it's something that would just be fabulous but in but in the end it's better that it was something that we did not get so that's what that was there for so a pretty lace doily a few little last pieces of ephemera tucked in by music sheet and I just had that at the top, just to add a little bit more interest. And then on the last page here, I have another um, piece of ruffle that I made from a, a fabric sheet or um, pattern paper. A couple of pieces of book pages that I tucked underneath to add a little bit more interest. And at the end, I put this word where it says, I had a lovely time. So I hope you enjoyed my book. I loved making it. It's it's uh, just something precious to me. I did make it with the intent to give it to someone at the party. Um, I was going to make something really simple. So we'll see if that happens or if I end up keeping it. Because I'm telling you, I'm in love with it. So anyway, I hope you have a lovely evening or day or wherever you're at. And I will see you another time. Thank you.